What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to restrict who can make a post for our blog with Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to restrict who can make blog posts. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, it is Friday here in Vegas. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. So this one's not going to be particularly long, and this is sort of the last video we need to talk about user authentication stuff. We've been talking about that in the last few videos, who can make a post, who can edit a post, who the correct user is, things like that. The last sort of piece of the puzzle is the add post page. How we originally set this up, we have a drop down box and you can pick who is, you know, making the post. So if I'm admin, I would pick admin. If I'm Bob, I would pick Bob. But the problem is if I'm Bob, I could still pick admin and then make a blog post and then admin would own that blog post, but Bob would be making it which is not ideal, especially if you have a bunch of people using your website. You don't want strangers being able to pick other people to be the author. So we need to fix this. And this is actually a little tricky because we learned in the last video how to figure out who the current logged in user is. That's that user.id. But that's fine on the front end here, right? So as soon as I log in, the website on the front end knows I'm user.id of one or user.id of three. The front end knows that. The back end doesn't so much know that. So for instance, if we pull up our code here and look at our forms.py file, right here, we can see here's that author drop down box, right? It would just be the easiest thing in the world to just tag on here a value of, you know, user.id and then be done with it. But the back end doesn't know who the user ID is because the back end doesn't know yet who's logged in, right? So we can write like a page of code in order to have this forms.py file sort of, in essence, go to the front end, figure out who the current user is, bring it back here and do just that, slap it in there. But like I said, it's gonna take like a page of code to do that and that's nonsensical. Instead, we're gonna hack around on this and we're gonna use like two lines of JavaScript and just do it on the front end and kind of trick the system into whatever we want to trick it into. So that's what we're going to do in this video. It's actually kind of fun. So I am not a huge JavaScript guy. I've got a couple of courses on JavaScript. And if you're interested in JavaScript, check out my JavaScript for everyone course on Codemy. It's, it's pretty good. But like I said, I'm not a huge JavaScript guy. There are people who are just diehard JavaScript fanatics. That's all they do. They love JavaScript so much. They created Node, which is a server built on JavaScript. Seems a little nutty to me, but for me, I love JavaScript for this type of thing. Just little hacks where you need to make a little tweak and you can't really do it any other way very easily. And you can use just a couple of lines of JavaScript to get something done. And for, for things like that, I'll use JavaScript all day long. I love it. But like I said, that's not the, the normal way people use JavaScript. They make big, huge files, they use Node, they do all these things. We're just gonna use two little lines of code to tweak with the DOM a little bit and uh, swap in what we wanna swap in. So let's take a look at this. This is our forms.py file. And like I said, we've got this form, we've got this author field with a select dropdown thing. And that is just this author field right here, this select dropdown box, right? So we don't really want that anymore. What we want is just a regular input box that has, you know, Bob in there. Or actually, we don't want the username. We want their ID number. So Bob is three. So our box would say three, right? So that's what we need to start to set up. So let's head back over to our code. And I'm just going to comment out our current author tag. And I'm just going to copy our title tag here or any of the ones that have just a regular box. And I'm going to paste it in and let's change this from title tag to author. And then the classes is going to be form control and that's that's fine. So let's save this and see what that did. So head back over here and hit reload. And for some reason, our title tag here is red. Let's come back and try that again. OK, there we go. So now we have this author text box, right? And we don't have the drop down thing anymore that has the authors in it, right? So, okay, 
we're going we're going good so far. But now we want this to say Bob. It, we want this to be able to automatically know who's logged in and put their name or their ID in there. So for now, just for purposes of showing you, I'm going to come over here and let's add a placeholder field. Uh, we've done this before, so let's just go placeholder. And then for the text we want for now, let's put uh, username or just username like that. So if we save this, head back over here and hit reload, boom, now it says username in here. But if we click on this and start typing, uh, that goes away. So this is just to show you for now. So now what we want to do is in this box, put our user or more importantly, their ID. Well, we'll do both just to see. So we need JavaScript. So let's head over to our, let's see, add host page. And let's just put some ones on here and, and save this and reload just to make sure we're in the right place. Yep, yep, there we are. So we know we're in the right place. Get rid of those. So whenever you're dealing with JavaScript and you want to change something on the page with JavaScript, you usually need like a CSS ID or something, something to identify the thing you want to change, right? So we actually need to give, uh, let's see, let's go back to our page real quick. We, we need to give this field an ID of something so our JavaScript can identify it. So let's do that real quick. Head back over to our forms.py file. And after placeholder, let's give this another comma and let's give it an ID, like a, like a CSS ID, right? And for now, let's give this an ID of, I don't know, elder, just something to identify. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you, could, you could name this uh, user or, you know, whatever, but we just need something to identify this. If we come back here and hit reload and now view the page source, and we can now search for elder, and we can see right here, ID equals elder. So this is our input box, input type text, name author, class form control, placeholder, username, and now ID elder. So now we can write some JavaScript to say, hey, grab the thing with ID of elder and change it a little, right? So that's pretty easy. Let's head back over to our code and look at our add post page. And here's our form that gets automatically generated. There's our button. Now down beside, now down below this, I'm just gonna write a little JavaScript. So let's call it script tag. And we always wanna close our tags right off the bat. and First off, we need to determine what the user ID is or what the user name is, right? So let's create a, a JavaScript variable and I'm gonna call this name and let's set that equal to, and we can use our regular Django variables here to just call user.id to get that user ID, right? And it's JavaScript, so we need a stupid semicolon but <laughs> after it. Now we can just go document dot get element by ID, which is just normal JavaScript, right, to call a specific element. And what element do we want? We want the element with ID elder, right, because we're getting it by ID. And did we call this elder or capital elder? I don't remember. Let's look at our forms. Yeah, lowercase elder. So there we go. And then we want to set the dot placeholder for now. We'll change this in a second to something oh, where do we go space ah, we're line wrapping here what do we want to do name what's name that's this variable right here we just created which is our user id so now if we save this and head back over here and hit reload boom it says one there if we log out and log back in as bob remember bob's id is three now, if we come here, boom, it says three there. Now, this is placeholder text. This is not what we want. I just use placeholder text to show you that the three is appearing. We could come through here and instead of user ID, we could go user dot, I think it's username maybe. Let's try that. Yeah, Bob. So if you want the username and you can run through all of the things. Remember, we have user dot name, we have user dot uh, first underscore name. Bob, right? We have last name. I'm just playing at this point. This should be elder. I think this is Bob elder. Yeah, right. But what we need here is the ID number itself. So that was user.id. 
And if we save this, come back, boom, it's back to three. Now, like I said, we don't want this to be a placeholder. We want the value to be three. So the input box value. And we don't actually have a value yet. So let's head back over to our forms.py file. And instead of placeholder, let's, let's do value. And instead of it saying username, let's just leave it blank, right? So now the value will be whatever our JavaScript has, has told it to be. So if we save this and come back here and hit reload, uh, it says three there, but that's actually, maybe I didn't save this file. Let's save this again. There we go. Now we come back here and hit reload. Okay, it still says three. What we need to do now is actually hide this box because it says three there, but I could still just type one. And so the same problem still remains. We could use a different user or we can assign these posts to different users and we don't want to let the, the user do that. So all we have to do is make this field hidden and we can do that pretty easily just by coming back here. And so we have class form control. We have value, nothing. We have ID equals elder. Now we want to give it a type uh, quotation marks type colon hidden and that will hide this thing so if we save this come back here and hit reload boom it disappears now if we view the page source now and we search for elder boom there it is we can see it still exists here's our our input box but it's hidden its name is still author its class still has form control although we don't really need that anymore because it's hidden the value on this says zero or it says nothing and the ID says elder. Now it says there's nothing in the value here, but there is. Our JavaScript has put in the ID number. You just can't see it when you view the page source, which is actually kind of neat. There's one more thing we need to do. We need to tweak our JavaScript code real quick because earlier when we wrote this code, we, we set the placeholder as this ID, but we don't have a placeholder anymore. Now we have a value. So we change this to value name save this. Now, if we come back here and hit reload and view the page source again and search for elder, the value still is not listed as anything, even, even though our JavaScript has definitely put it in there. It's just not showing up here on the page source, source which is kind of neat. So let's create a post, Bob's second post and title tag there. We'll put an encoding and I'm just going to put a bunch of stuff here. Now if we click here, boom, Bob's second post coding edit, edit. So we still can't edit the rest of admin stuff, but we can edit this post and that works. So if we log out and log back in as admin and then try to add a post, let's go admin post three. I don't know. Admin. Hello there, whatever. Click this. Boom. There it is down a little bit. We must be, uh, doing by date, not by ID, but there it is. Hello there. We can edit and delete it and it works. So that's how we kind of lock down this add post page so that only people who are logged in and only specific logged in people can make posts for their specific account. So only, so admin can only post posts as admin. Bob can only make posts as Bob. We can't select now who the author is manually. We just have to uh, be that person in order to be able to make a blog post for them. And I think that's probably the way you want to do it. And uh, like I said, very simple with just two lines of JavaScript, right? And it's just document dot get element ID. The element is elder because that's what we named it in the forms .py file, set the value equal to the name. We define the name here. This is our Django variable that we've used, you know, dozens of times already and you're already familiar with. And that's all there is to it. A couple tweaks to the forms.py file and you're good to go. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the channel out. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So it pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.